Okay, in this video I'm going to show you, um, give you the introduction to um, where you find sources of chemical information for um, organic materials. And this will be useful for both the Chem 223 and Chem 224 courses, so first and second semester. In experiment four, I've asked you, and actually probably in experiment 3B, you were asked to find um, literature values for physical properties of reagents, products. Um, in experiment four, the acid analyd um, that we're going to use in that experiment. So finding information, finding melting points, refractive indices, um, boiling points, densities, etc for organic molecules is a little bit different than what you did in general chemistry. In general chemistry you use the CRC handbook of chemistry and physics and in organic chemistry it's a little bit that's a little bit difficult to use because of the naming um, that's used. So the first place to probably look for these physical um, the physical information is to go to what's called the Aldrich Catalog of Fine Chemicals and then the Sigma Aldrich website. Uh, Sigma and Aldrich used to be separate chemical companies that per, that basically we order uh, a number of our chemicals that we use in the lab from, and they've they've since merged. Um, in a sort of brilliant marketing scheme, the Aldrich Chemical Company basically used to produce, before the internet, a catalog of all the chemicals that they uh, would sell you. And as part of that, they put all the physical properties uh, that were relevant and the structures in that catalog. And so people kept it on their reference desk, kept it on their desk as a reference. And then, of course, when they needed to order something, there was the Sigma Alder or there was this, the Aldrich catalog for them to order from. There are still paper copies of this available, although everything's moving, you know, and has moved electronically. There are paper copies of the Aldrich catalog in both the organic labs as well as the carabine lab. But they also have a website where you can find all of that information as well. And so it's at www.sigmaaldrich.com. And so if I click on that website, and it lets me, then we can go to that website and we could look up that particular information. So under the search, you can search uh, whatever chemical you're looking for. Um, there, It is possible to um, search what's called the chemical abstracts number. And in later courses, you'll learn that every chemical has a unique number called the chemical abstract number that um, you can use as an identifier to um, type in. But let's say I wanted to look for acid analyd in this case. So if I type in acid analyd, it's going to come up with, um, first of all, acid analyd. Dif there are different um, types, different purities that I can order. And then there's some other compounds of acid analyd that I could order as well. Some where the hydrogen atoms are been substituted with the deuterium, um, which is the hydrogen isotope of two. There's one where the nitrogen 14 um, isotope has been substituted with nitrogen 15. There's one where I've got a chloroacetyl group. But I'm going to look for the acid analyd. And so any of these values are going to give me, in essence, the same physical values. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on the first one. And so here's the information that I can use about acid analyd. First of all, it gives me its chemical structure in the line bond. Now, if I wanted to cut and paste that structure into my table of physical values, I can right mouse click. I can either save the image or copy the image. And in this case, if I copied the image and went down to Word, I could then simply paste that image in. And so I could build my table for my lab report um, using this. And then, of course, I can probably shrink it down and, and other things. OK, so if I go back here to the, where is the Sigma Aldrich catalog? What well, didn't. I'll have to go back, apparently. So if I go back here and look at acid analyd, again, that's one thing. That's where you can always find the chemical structure is on the Sigma Aldrich catalog. 
And then if you look up here, there are things like its molecular weight. Um, there's this CAS number that can be used to identify it if you needed to find that. Um, second semester, you'll learn about uh, NMR and IR spectroscopy. Sometimes those are available. For instance, for this compound, it has its NMR. So if I click on it, I can get an, an NMR, both a, a proton and a carbon NMR of that compound. I don't need a survey. And then if I start coming down here, I can look for other things in terms of properties. I can uh, look at its melting point. So its melting point of acid anil is 113 to 115. Um, if I was to turn it into a liquid and boil it, it was 300. Um, and there's other information. If this was a liquid, it would tell me what its density was. Um, and so there's, there's, this is where you can find most of the physical properties for that uh, compound is by looking at the Sigma Aldrich website. We can also find its MSDS here, and I'll come back to that because that sometimes is an important source of chemical information here in a minute or two. Okay, so it also tell me how much it how much it costs per one gram or five grams, and so you can see that the acid analyd this particular very, very ultra pure version is $73 a gram. Don't order chemicals from the Sigma Aldrich catalog. We have had people do that in the past and that never ends well, so don't do that. Um, but this is one source, and this is probably the source where you're gonna, the major source that you're gonna use to get your structure and also get your um, melting points and densities and boiling points. And, and for all literature references, make sure that you write down um, in your notebook as well as the lab report where you got your information from. Uh, that way we can, if you have a melting point that's significantly different than what other people have or what I have in my answer key, then we can go to the literature reference and see um, whether or not you've written it down incorrectly or whether or not that value that you've gotten is, is correct. Okay, so that's one place. And in the handout, which is um, above this lecture, the link for this lecture video, you can see that they've changed their format a little bit of their website, but you can see all the information that is there. Another place to find um, was called ChemFinder. And the problem with ChemFinder is that it used to be the simplest way to find all the physical properties, but then they changed their website, and so it, it isn't. Um, but we can go ahead and let's see what it looks like now, because I haven't done this in a while. So we have, we could do a quick search. Let's see what is here for acid analyd on ChemFinder or ChemBioFinder. It's the same thing. So let's see what it says. Okay, so it says here is another version of that, another picture of acid analyd. If I right mouse click, I can copy that. So I could use this. If I had this program called ChemDraw, I could actually um, paste that structure in and I could use it to draw other structures. Um, you don't have that, but I, I do have ChemDraw. Um, and let's see what it says when we ask for showing details. If there's anything useful here. And of course, there isn't. They used to have the melting point and the boiling point. You can still find the molecular weight and you can still find the formula, but for the most part, all the useful information is pretty much gone from this website other than the structure. So use the Sigma Aldrich as your first um, online because that's that's the one that's the most um, that has most of the information. Okay, so there was a time when this was useful. Now the third resource that and one that you'll have to use for experiment four is the Merck index. Now the Merck index is not a catalog. The Merck index uh, contains information that is somewhat different than um, this than what you find in Sigma Aldrich. 
And in the Merck Index, you'll find um, synonyms for that chemical. You'll find its structure. It may have its melting point or boiling point, but it also contains a lot more information like a reference to um, the paper where that material is synthesized or where it was isolated. Um, it will tell you how to recrystallize the material. In other words, it'll say it's recrystallized from this solvent. It'll give you solubility information like 5 grams per 100 milliliters. And sometimes it has toxicity information or it has the pharmacological properties like is this an analgesic? Is this another type of, um, does it have another pharma, uh, pharmacological use? And so if that's what you want to know, if you want to know about toxicity and, and the, the pharmacy of this, then what you would do is you would look at the Merck Index. Um, I don't believe the Merck Index is available free online. There are copies of it in the Carabine Lab. And so if we looked at for acid analyd, what its um, entry is, this is, an, this is a version, and so it's Acid analyte is also called N-phenylacetamide or these other compounds. Um, acetyl aminobenzene is another one. Here's its molecular weight. Here's its carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen analysis. Um, it tells you how, to pr how it was synthesized. Um, it was synthesized from aniline and acetyl chloride back in 1961, and there's the reference for it. Um, it was synthesized in another version, and here's another paper for the synthesis. Here is its structure, and then here's recrystallization information. So it can be recrystallized, and it'll show up as plate-like crystals from water. It has a melting point of 113 to 115. Uh, I don't taste it, but if it, ha but if sometimes that information's there. Um, it has, uh, that somebody has highlighted, apparently, in this page, one gram dissolves in 185 milliliters of water, 20 milliliters of boiling water, and then all of this stuff. So, you here is what you're going to find for the pre-lab assignment, except, oh, there's no reference information here about what version it came from and what page number. So you're still going to have to look at the Merck Index in order to find all of this information. So while it's here, uh, it's not. This isn't. This sheet is not a valid reference. Um, and there's some other things that are here. Um, it's use. It's used to make other medicinals. It's used to make dyes. It's a stabilizer that's added to hydrogen peroxide, etc. It's an antipyretic and analgesic, and in veterinary medicine, it's an antipyretic and analgesic. So, the idea here is that the Merck Index gives you that sort of. It gives you more information information than just the um, Sigma Aldrich. It gives you a lot more of the pharmaceutical. Um, information as well as practical stuff on how to recrystallize it and its solubility information. Okay. Now the fourth reference is the one that you used in general chemistry which is the CRC handbook of chemistry and physics and this is probably the most complete source of just physical property information but it's the most difficult to use because it uses a combination of naming that is sometimes quite confusing even to me. And we're just starting at this point. We will have just started to talk about naming in the lecture class. So it uses different combinations. And so, for instance, to find the information about um, acid analyd, you can see that they have it listed as acetamide and phenyl or acid analyd. So you'd have to find that. It gives molecular weight. It gives its boiling point, it gives its melting point, and it doesn't give a melting point as a range. It just gives a single number. And then it tells you what the solubility is in alcohol, ether, acetone, benzene, and chloroform. And then it gives you a reference to what are called Beilstein, which is a German, an old German reference, um, which we, we're not going to go into in this class, but later on you may learn more about the Beilstein um, references, particularly if you do research. So it's a little more difficult to find that acid, uh, to find the acid analyte entry into the, um, into the 
CRC handbook. Now, in the pre-lab assignment, I've asked you to do to look at the CRC handbook, so this entry isn't going to tell you anything more than you need to find the acid and it'll be called acetamid and phenyl. Now, the last piece of information where you can find um, physical property, but more importantly, you can find safety information and toxicity information is what's called an MSDS, Material Safety Data Sheet. And so by OSHA, we're, we're required to have an MSDS on file in the central stores for every chemical that we have stored in the building. And oftentimes you'll find these in the labs themselves um, so that they're immediately available. You can find these on the Sigma Aldrich website. They're sometimes difficult to read, um, but the idea of the material safety data sheet is to give you information about toxicity, how to handle the material, how to dispose of it. Um, and so when you actually, be, sometimes before you even order a chemical, you'll consult the MSDS to understand what you're getting yourself into. How difficult will it be to, to dispose of? How will you have to work, use this? Will you have to use it in a hood? Will you have to wear gloves? Would you have to wear a respirator? Um, and so the MSDS for from the Aldrich catalog for um, an older one for acid analyte is shown here. It's one I printed off a few years ago. And you can see that as we go through this, it says here's, its, here's another name, amphenyl acetamide. We've seen that. Here's its molecular weight. Here's its CAS number. Apparently in Europe they have a different type of CAS number. Mm -hmm. um, here's its classification in terms of its health hazard. If you've ever seen the triangle with the numbers in it, this is where you can find those numbers. Although that's being changed over to something else. Here's some first aid measures. Um, if you inhale, then move the person into fresh air. Um, if you have skin contact, wash off with soap and copious amounts of water. If you get it in your eyes, here's what to do. If it's swallowed, then it tells you exactly what to do. What's our, what are its firefighting? If it catches on fire, what should you do? Um, if it's accidentally released, what should you do? How should you handle and store this? Should it be stored in a refrigerator? Should it be stored in a flame-proof vault, um, etc.? What should you wear while you're doing this? Um, should you wear a dust mask? Should you use this in the hood? And so all this information then is there. Now, eventually you can find the melting point here. You can find things like the flash point, what ignition temperature it would have, what its stability is, it'll say don't store it next to strong oxidizing oxidizing agents and bases in case it came the bottles were to break if it came in contact with that you would have um, some issues here's some toxicity information so the LD50 which is the lethal dose 50 um, for oral if it's taken orally for a rat is 800 milligrams per kilogram of body mass and so you can find all of this information in the MSDS. And particularly for those of you that go on and take physical chemistry lab, you'll deal more with these because you'll actually have to look those up before you do your experiments in order to understand what kinds of safety precautions. And when we do research, we should consult these before we even order the chemical so that way we're fully aware of what its safety hazards are because the safety hazards might be might be pretty extensive and we may not even want to use that chemical and once we've ordered it and we have it in then then we're you know then we're stuck with it so we always want to consult this before we even order okay so these are the different sources of information that you can use um, and as I said you're mostly going to be using the Sigma Aldrich catalog but for experiment four you're also going to have to use the Merck index and the CRC in order to find um, particularly the solubility information. So again, you can find those resources in the Carabine lab, um, and there are Aldrich catalogs in the uh, in the lab, in the, the lab, organic lab itself. Okay, so there's the handout you can consult as well as this video is taking you through that. But just keep these in these sources in mind as you go through the semester.